Come man, I bugle me out I'm about to not to the I just a real youth A real rasta youth Generally not the thing you better know <laughs> Fears that concerns Rastafarians globally, as I too am a Rastaman, and concerns I just the same. Well, there are certain issues concerning Rastafarians, indigenous intellectual property rights that has not been addressed over the period of Rasta's establishment globally. Now Rastafarians are seated in a motion of doing the governmental activities as it relates to Rastafarians. We are in all mansions, mansions of the Naya Bingi, Bobo Shanti, 12 tribes of Israel, the EWF and the Ethiopian Orthodox have united with one common voice in the Millennium Council. And the Millennium Council now being the representative of Rasta's affairs, governmentally and otherwise, have now elected those people that represent Rastafarians through the Council. We have with us brother, we don't know him from a long time, I rely on this, Sister Maxine Stowe. Yes, how are you? That's Good. And with this meeting, we are now discussing those things that concern the intellectual properties of Rastafarians. And Miss Maxine Stowe is with us with the knowledge that is required to defend those things and affairs as it concerns the property rights intellectually, indigenously. Of Rastafarians, presenting to you Ms. Maxine Stowe. Yes. Greetings, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and to, you know, to be involved in this reasoning. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to be involved in this reasoning um, regarding the indigenous um, intellectual property rights of the Rastafari community. My interest in, the, in this area is really driven by my own experience with the culture, but more so my um, experience and career in Jamaica's music industry, where a good portion or a very large portion of the Rastafari intellectual property has been taken up by the Jamaican music form, and so in my interest in understanding how to protect Jamaican music, it um, led me to um, understand more deeply who represents the Rastafari culture that has been taken up and been uh, commercialized um, through the music. So on that path, um, I met up with um, several Rastafari community members were on their own path of um, organizing and centralizing um, a, 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 a format where they, um, for quite a few years now, have been, you know, going through different, um, different gatherings um, to put their management of their um, community and their various cultural assets in order. I actually recognize that as early as 1983, 1984, there was a Rastafari International Trading um, Association slash RITA slash conference. And so from as far back as that, I recognize that the community acknowledged their rights that is in all of the outcomes documents of these gatherings coming straight up to 2003. They identified their culture and its use in um, music and in, you know, trade as something that they wanted to um, 
more clearly understand, manage, and control. So through my work in the music industry, I was able to introduce um, through the World Intellectual Property Organization out of Geneva, who I had been working with um, in mapping out how to manage Jamaican music um, as a whole. Um, they introduced to me and via me, the community, um, intellectual property particular was out of South Africa, uh, Roger Channels, who worked with the Sand Tribe, um, who, who actually um, populate several countries in Southern Africa, South Africa itself, Namibia, um, Zimbabwe, etc. So I recognize by trying to understand the Rastafari um, cultural rights, I was introduced to a larger um, global movement by indigenous groups, um, starting with the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Groups that was about 20 years ago by the United Nations. And um, since that Declaration of Rights of All Indigenous Peoples, um, the development of um, laws to protect. So I recognize that the Rastafari community um, fit the format that the indigenous groups worldwide um, were, you know, described under. So um, we then moved to the bringing the experts in from WIPO to meet not only with the Rastafari community but also the Maroons. And in 19 in 2007, the, the, um, this information or this intellectual property forum to educate the community merged with the ongoing centralized and organized um, activity and out of this the Millennium Council was formed. So basically it was the centralized and organized energy that was actually being driven by the approaching of the millennium in 2000, September 11, 2007, and um, the interest in um, intellectual property, um, indigenous intellectual property rights out of the music. Interestingly, I was working with the group Third World, and they actually had an album called Journey to Addis. So that whole relationship further developed because I was trying to understand what the Rastafari community in Jamaica was doing towards the Ethiopian um, millennium. And um, that was another energy that helped to, you know, focus and, and bring this all together. So recognizing that the millennium activities also were not streamlined was another um, activity that helped to focus the Millennium Council to be formed. Um, through the IP forum that was held um, in 2007, um, the, the community began to understand um, that its intellectual property rights was the basis for its economic development. And I don't think so much recognize that because, again, I think from as far back 1983, this has been recognized. But it means by which to move from the recognition into an action triggered by the, um, by the IP forum in 2007, where the reality is that the culture, because I think up until this time, the organized and centralized activity was really done around trying to bring together different mansions within the Rastafari community um, to speak with one voice. Whereas I think, personally, the, the recognition of the intellectual property that the Rastafari culture belongs to all, every constituent member or group is a collective owner of the culture, and so to manage the culture, a collective organization 
had to be created because no one group, no one individual, etc., could really go and represent. So I think um, the, 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 the development and the understanding about intellectual property and management of the culture was a major catalyst to actually um, cement this centralizing and organizing energy and give it a, a more neutral platform to exist on and less, um, a, a less ideological platform that had been, you know, the struggle over the years. So with that saying, um, the experts um, came in and said that in order to um, manage the benefits from the intellectual property, a uh, council had to be formed, and that council would um, oversee the development of a trust fund where the, the, um, the income or the e economy generated by the intellectual property rights um, would be able to go into a mechanism that was designed to support its constituent groups, Three. right? Because all of the groups, again, make up the culture, right? So therefore, it would have to be developed to distribute back the benefits. Because again, no one group or no one individual could represent it because it's a collective effort.